Next up, I want to talk about infinite scroll or lazy loading and how we can use the Intersection Observer to do this. So I have a web page here. I've got a footer, I've got a header, and what I want to do is every time the footer is on the screen or close to the screen, I want to do another um, fetch call to the server to get some JSON and then build new content, including images, on the page. So as I scroll, Every time the footer gets close to being on the screen, we want to do another call to get more data. So it keeps feeding data to this and it keeps growing and growing and growing. Now I will say this, the one, um, the one thing that you shouldn't do with lazy load is have a footer that includes any important content, um, any links that are necessary. And the reason I say this is because I've actually come across websites before where they used lazy load but there was no limit on it. It was it really was an infinite scroll. As long as you kept scrolling, it kept loading new content. But down in the bottom were the contact links. So if you wanted help, if you wanted to contact their tech support or things like that, those were down in the footer. But you could never get to the footer simply because the infinite scroll kept putting new content above this. So just keep that in mind when you're building infinite scrolls or lazy loads. All right, so let's take a look and see how we do this with the Intersection Observer. Uh, my basic CSS, we've got uh, styles on the HTML body, header, the main area. This is where we're going to be loading our content. So I use display grid. I've got three columns set up. Um, I've created margin around each one of the elements. So there's going to be an image or a figure with a caption below it. And there's going to be three of those per row. And it's just going to continue to build this grid. Uh, like I said, there's going to be a figure caption. There's going to be an image and then our footer. So nothing really earth shattering about the styles for that. And let's just get into the script. So I have this URL right here that I've defined as a constant. This is a GitHub just with a JSON file. It's just got four elements inside of it. Uh, you can use that for your sample if you, as, if you want as well. If you want to link to this, uh, this code, you'll find the link to it down in the description. That's the starter code. So you can follow along and fill this in. Now I've already defined the starting point for the intersection observer. If you haven't used this before, uh, I've got a link down in the description to my introductory video to the intersection observer to explain how that works. Uh, so I've defined as my options, no margins, which means I'm looking at the entire viewport. That is the entire web page. And my threshold is 50%, meaning that because I'm going to be watching the footer I want to know when the footer is on the screen. I'm saying if 50% of the footer is in the viewport of the page, that's going to be my trigger for this callback method right here, this intersection observer that I'm building. Handle intersect down here. This is going to be called every time the footer is 50% onto the screen. All right, so we can jump over to the web page, we can see that my console log message is appearing as soon as the page loads, because it is, it's intersecting, it's on the page, it is visible. Um, if I were to come up here and put a margin top on my footer of, let's say, 500, uh, let's make it uh, 900 pixels, we'll stick it way down. I don't get the console log message because it is way down here. When I scroll on, that's when it triggers this message. Okay, so back to the way that was. So it is on the screen. There we go. All right, so I am observing the footer. I've created my observer object. I'm telling it to watch the footer. When the footer is there, I'm calling this method and I'm checking to make sure that it is intersecting. So this is either a true or false value that tells me whether or not the footer is at least 50% on the screen. And if it is, then what I want to do is I want to make my fetch call. And I'll do my fetch call and then I will call this get data method. That'll be my thing that I do at the very beginning. Now, I'm probably going to want to call get data because I'm only fetching four elements at a time. I'm probably going to do this get data one time at the very beginning just to push the footer down just so there is content that the user can see. Um, if there is an intersection, 
we're going to call get data. So if the footer is visible, call get data. And at the very beginning, when the page first loads, we're going to call get data to get our initial load of data. That's it. So these are the two places that you want to have it. Every time there's an intersection, so every time the footer comes on the screen, and every time the page loads for the first time. Down here, this is going to be just a basic fetch call. Now URL, that was my constant that I defined up above here. Right here, that was the uh, code gist that had the JSON file. And because it is JSON, we need to take our response that we're getting back and convert it or extract the JSON data from the file. And then there's our data. Now, inside of here, this is going to be the array with all of the elements. For each one of those, we want to create this figure with an image and a figure caption inside of it. So we'll create, uh, let's see, the figure first. I'll say create element figure. And then we're going to have a figure caption and we're going to have an image. Now, inside of data, there is um, the structure of my data is that there is data dot items, and items is an array. And for each one of those, there is an image, and there is whatever the number is here, a name. And there's also an ID. But we're just going to use this image and this name from the data to build these. So we need to do a loop through all the items in the array. So data.items dot for each and for each item put these back inside of here. So for every one of the items we're building a figure, figure caption and the image, the image dot source will be equal to the item dot image the image.alt, you always want to put an alternate text on every one of your images. Accessibility, do it, do it at the very beginning. Don't make it an afterthought. And our figure caption, text content will be item.name, same as the alternate text. Okay, so there's our content. There's the figure, figure caption, and the image for each one of those items. We want to stick each one of those inside of the main element on the page. If we scroll up here, right here, this main element, this is where we're placing all of them. This is where the columns are being built by our CSS using the CSS grid. So main dot append child. The figure is what's going inside of there. And then we also have to make sure that the image and the figure caption are inside there. So fig dot append child, put the image inside. And then the figure append child, the figure caption. Those are all going to be inside there. Okay, so let's try that out. Okay, so we've got the data being fetched. Looks like something's going on with our request for the images, though. So we are fetching the data. Yeah, IMG, that's... Oh, yes. <laughs> you probably noticed that. IMG is the appropriate HTML tag. There we go. All right, now back to our console. So we're seeing this. We have the first four. That was our initial load. And then there's four more happening after that. One, two, three, four. And then as soon as my footer gets 50% on the screen, boom, another one gets called. And so I can keep going and going and going and going. And it's loading these. And it is happening quite quickly. If you want to see it running a little bit slow, if you're testing things and you want to see how things run on slower connections, something that you can do in Chrome, if you go into More Tools, you'll find there's a network conditions. And inside of here, 
I can disable the caching of images so it's always fetching new versions of it. And we can say, you know what, I'm going to do a, a slow 3G connection. So I'm going to simulate a slow 3G connection. You can see it's taking a while to load my page. There it is. There's the, four, the uh, eight of them. Now we have to wait and then the images will slowly start to come in. You'll see them come in in pairs usually because It'll load one, and then the other one is just a copy of it. If you want to see it a little bit faster, we can do fast 3G. Still gives you the chance to watch everything come in. And that's the basics of building an infinite scroll or lazy loading system. The Intersection Observer has made this tremendously easy to do. Uh, not like it used to be where you had to actually calculate bounding boxes around the elements or determine how far the user had scrolled and calculate the size of the elements that you were putting in there and then see if that added up to enough space that you should start to get more content. Now, all we have to do is pick something at the bottom of the screen, like the footer, and that's your trigger. When the intersection observer tells you, hey, the footer's on the viewport again, or it's close to it, with the root margins, if you want to, at the bottom, you can push this down below. So you could say, if the footer is within 200 pixels of the viewport, that's going to be good enough. Make that the trigger to load something. If you do that, though, if you are saying that if the footer is within that amount of space, make sure you're doing enough of an initial load to push it down below that point so that you're able to trigger it because the handle intersect only gets fired once when something enters the viewport and when something leaves the viewport. Those are the only times. It's not as long as it is still in the viewport. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Have fun with that. Uh, like I said, the link to the code gist for this down in the description, you can play around with that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.